Hello. Hello, hello. Boys and girls and everybody else. Hi. Welcome to this. video. Distracting ASMR where I am literally going to distract you for two hours. Yeah, two hours. And it's gonna involve lots of different exciting triggers and tests. We're gonna start like this. So I'm gonna sit on my bed just now with my pillow. And then for the second half of the video, we're going to lie down. So I'm going to like lie in the bed and distract you that way. And I'm going to distract you so much that you're going to fall asleep. Like fast asleep, okay? Now, I feel like every time I speak to you, I see this, but it is wild outside. There is another storm. So bad that this morning, I went to the gym and then I got stuck for about 45 minutes on the way home because there was so much flooding and nobody could drive anywhere. So that's what I mean. It's very, very, very stormy. Um, so if you hear, you might hear some storm sounds, you might hear things in the background, but it should hopefully all be nice. So let's get comfortable. I'll cozy him in my PJs, my little nightdress. Because we're going to be here for a while. And you cannot go anywhere. You have to stay and be distracted for the entire video, okay? Otherwise, you weren't really here at all. You failed. You'll have failed the mission. You have to stay. Right. So, I hope we're we're in agreement with that. So definitely get comfortable, a little blanket, a little something something to cuddle up and just relax and get ready to be distracted. There will be some parts as well that you absolutely have got to do what I say. Absolutely. 100%. And I will know, I will know if you've not done what I, what I said that you need to do. <laughs> Um, but there should hopefully be something for you that's really nice, uh, that's kind of your cup of tea, something you can take off your trickery, tingly list that'll make you tingle. So yeah, this is actually super comfy. I got this recently. It's like a little, little pillow. Do you have one of these in your bed? It actually, if I sit it there and I put my elbows on, it's actually very comfortable. I think I should use this for Anyway, I hope you've had a good day. I hope you're feeling good. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to feel amazing. You deserve to feel loved and happy and all those wonderful, wonderful things and ready to sleep. So, so don't forget, I have to sleep. Okay. I have made sure that I have the list, the full list of things to do. Because <laughs> I had to write it down. Otherwise, I'll forget. There's so many things I need to do to distract you, okay? So we're distracting you from your your negative thoughts, any unhappiness, any insomnia. We're distracting you from all of that to allow your brain to fall asleep, to let it become mindfulness, to let it forget. You can remember in the morning, that's okay, but for now. Just to let it fall asleep, okay? So that is what we are distracting you from. And I'm going to distract you. I'm going to succeed. It's going to be absolutely, absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. So I think first things first, I absolutely need to make you a distracting tea. Now, this is not just a sleep tea. This is a distracting tea, and it's a little bit different. So we will be putting this. distracting. If you smell this, it is a 
is very uh, poignant. It is like if you've ever had one of those cinnamon fireball sweets. That is what this is like. Yeah, it is. It is something else. But this is distracting. So you're going to be having this in your tea. French Super Blue Lavender Herbal Tea May this smells like your classic lavender is beautiful I mean, I think it is just literally lavender Yummy, yummy, yummy Okay And you're going to be mixing those two together So you're going to be sleepy But you're also going to be distracted I actually got these Both of these Um From the US. New York, Route 22, Millerton, New York. And this one's caffeine free. And it's hand packed as well. This one, this one caffeine free. No, this one has caffeine. It has 40 to 60 milligrams, micrograms of uh, caffeine. So, but don't worry, I'll distract you enough to make So, if I need to clean this here. Hello, Lord. We have your tea mug. And we have this. This is being freshly boiled. It's my lovely little Alice tea mug. gonna make this distracting to you. Dead distracting. So we are going to add in here some of this. Now we mainly want the lavender. Here we are. This is your distracting cup of tea. And I 
I'm gonna sit it right beside you because you're gonna have to drink this to be distracted. It's very, very cinnamony. I'm not sure you get the lavender at all. Um, but you must drink this whole thing. No. No, no, no. We have that sorted. I need to ask you some personal questions. They may seem very random, but they're very personal and it has to be done because I need to understand how to distract you properly. Okay, so are you somebody that can pay attention? Do you pay attention well? Do you find you drift off in conversation? Are you So, do you like being asked questions? Do you find people quite boring to listen to? Are you distracted often by thoughts that might just pop into your head? Do you like bananas? Are you a people's person? Do you like being in the company of people? Hmm. Do you struggle to get to sleep? Are you currently wearing pajamas? Does it make you feel sleepy when you hear the Are you still thinking about whether or not you're wearing pajamas? What came first, the chicken or the egg? The answer, I think, is the egg because if you look at evolution, something that evolved into chicken it wasn't a chicken and then it laid an egg but it was like a chicken it laid an egg and that egg had mutated or that little baby had mutated enough that it then became the chicken so the egg came first okay is that distracting? am I distracting you? are you still thinking about the chicken? do you disagree with me? Is your favorite pet a dog? What is your favorite animal? Do you wake up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet a lot? Do you just wake up in the middle of the night? Is that something you do? Whenever in a study lesson or like some sort of lesson, whether it was school, college, university, did you always find it hard to pay attention for the full lesson? Who do you think I look like? Celebrity wise? Anybody? Do you like to go to the gym? person. Are you my friend? Do you think there are aliens out there? And if so, what would they look like? Are you still thinking about whether or not you have pajamas on? Okay, I think that is enough of those personal questions. I got, I got a really good sense of how to distract you. Thank you for that. Now, I'm going to come a little bit closer right up here because I need to distract you by plucking and tapping at you and plucking any negative energy, stepping away anything that we don't want there. Is that okay? Do you mind me being up in your space like this? 
think you'll be distracted enough. Okay, good. Well, let me just start plucking. I'll do a little mixture of plucking and tapping. my nose. Give me a little dippity dippity. Is that okay? Just dippity. I just want to. You there? Dippity 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 dip. You know. Yeah.
widely used by therapists as a massage oil to nourish, revive, and promote healthy skin. I like almonds. They're all right. Do you like almonds? Oh, that was too much, too much, too much. There's too much oil going everywhere, but I'm just going to put it right on you. I thought I didn't realize that this was going to pour all the way in like that. And now the oil is all over the carpet. Yay! Oops. Oh well. How do you think the oil in the carpet? I need to think about it. Think about it. solution yet. I'm about to get one out of the carpet. It's a perfect thing for your mind to be destroyed. This. If you can't think of anything, that's okay. I'm just going to get right in there. Into the back. Hunting over. Hunting over is not good for your posture and also good for your back. So I'm gonna try. So straight. There we go. While making the back creak at the same time. really going to distract you because you've heard it many times before. So, are you ready? I'll go nice and slow. Zen, zen, cuddle and cream over the crinkling sea. The moon man flings him a silver fashioned of moonbeams three and 
need to look up for me. Okay. Just keep looking up. I look down. And to your And to your left. Alright. Left. Up and down. Left and right. Up and down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up and down. Below the line. What to do? Go quite Alright. Down, 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 up. Down. Left. Right. Left. Bring the light in at any point of your vision, okay? Ready? Do you see it? Do you see that? Where was it from? I mean no. No suspended. You must follow this light right now while I'm doing this with it. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, that should be distracting. Now, we're gonna light candle because we haven't lit one yet. I'm gonna remove this. So, we're gonna put the candle beside you. There's lots of things to do. We're also going to do some crystals. I have some crystals. And we'll do some Reiki with it as well in a moment. So I'm going to take this out. Hello. I'm just going to leave it like my crystals are, are on the run from me. with our little holiday cheer one since it's now November. I think we can use the uh, Christmas ones. Very Christmassy. Oops. That was loud. I just put this right in where the uh, crystals are. We're going 
hair like this, like this, this is gonna be super crackly for a little while. Okay. Look into the light. What do you see? Can you see any? I don't know, fortunes. People look into this stuff, don't they? And there's like a fortune. Are you distracted? Can you see your fortune? we can find it. That's not I don't know if any of those. Oh, I think it's that one. Interesting. So I think this one is how like And it discourages rage and impoliteness, balances calcium levels, helping teeth and bones, and an aid to insomnia, especially when caused by an overactive mind. Bangin'. 
this is exactly what we are after today, okay? Because we're distracting you from your mind. Your, um, your mind. So now we're going to do a touch sequence and this is going to be a touch sequence for, I want to say just for, for distraction. Let's do a touch sequence that is for distraction from your negative thoughts and energies and things, okay? So for this, we're going to touch your ears your nose, your lips, so ears, nose, lips, throat and heart, ears, nose, lips, throat and heart. We're going to distract you. We're going to do it three times. Okay. Touch your ears. I'll take these from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Now, we are going to do a face mask. Distract the face mask of three you can choose from. Okay. I'm going to make them to you. We're going to make some signs and I'm going to put them on you. So we're doing that. Oh, I think you're going to be so excited for the next two bits. I'm actually very excited for the next two distracting bits. Okay. Are you ready? So, we have, first of all, a charcoal and menthol mask. Open to detox and balance. It's a detox and balancing face sheet mask. It refreshes the skin and removes the buildup. So it's really cool. Pores. Um, it's built up whilst moisturizing your. So you just put it on. Just can put on for five minutes or so. Um, so it's the first one. Then we have this prep and glow skin. It's me. 
beauty. This is infused with just your beautiful super rare fruits and vitamins such as raspberry, blueberry and goji berry. So it is infused with these and it preps and glows your skin. Bursting raspberry, blueberry and goji extracts which help clarify and refresh and eliminate your skin while providing essential antioxidant benefits. The perfect vegan smoothie your skin is craving. Love. Right. And the final one is a beautiful vitamin C brightening mask with blueberry, yuzu citrus, sea buckthorn. It's an anti aging formula. It's going to help brighten your skin tone, improves elasticity. And it says it's very good. You can travel. Use it on a plane. So, what one would you like? The raspberry one. Okay. This one. Let us open that. Oh, it's very wet. But it does smell good. There is still oil in the carpet. I hope you've not forgotten about the oil in the carpet. That we need to try and resolve. Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell. They're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, then that one's on top, and on and on it spins, crushing those on the ground. Tyrion Lannister. It's 
so the reason we have this is because we have the Game of Thrones eyeshadow that I'm going to distract you with. Where? So we have one, two, three, four different sections. We have this, which is obviously above the wall. So you have Take the Black, Frozen North, White Walker, The Free Folk, and Hard Homes there. Then if we go down into the section that's neater, more Winterfell, so the big one is Winterfell. Then you have Winter is Here. Nymeria is that one. Then we've got Weirwood Leaves is the purpley one. And this site is the green. Then you can move down. This is King's Landing. So King's Landing is that beautiful yellow. Then we have Casterly Rock is that one. The Red Keep. Lannister Red. And House Lannister. And then we're going to move down and it's more towards Daenerys and the dragons. So you've got the Bay of Dragons, is this one. You've got Stormborn, which is the lovely big purple. You've got House of Targaryen, is the gold, which is very Targaryen, I would say. The Thraki is this other sort of gold. And Ben. I'm going to start with the free folk, which is the silvery colour. So let's put a little bit of the free folk on you. Okay. Now remember, this is just all a distraction. A little bit of free folk here and there. Not going to hurt anyone. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the sight to this green one. Free folk as your base. Then we're adding the sight. I like the green, it's like a very jade green, very nice. Mm, now, I think with this, we're gonna add Casterly Rock into the bottom area there. This will go nicely with the gold, like green and gold. This is our vibe. So, Casterly. And then the final one, I think we have to do the really bright golden in the corners, the Dothraki. I think that will go with the other ones. So in the corners. Yeah. And there we have it. You have free folk. And the Rocky on your eyes. I'm sure you feel fabulous. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are going to. I said we would come back to this, and I wasn't lying because there's a quite a few more little sleepy poems in there that I want to read to you. So I'm going to do the other one. Clouds, goes, light sheep, light sheep on a blue hill. When the wind stops, you all stand still. When the wind blows, you walk away slow. Light Where did you go? We also have to sleep. It's called a flock 
a sheep that leisurely passed by, one after one, the sound of rain and bees, murmuring the fall of rivers, winds, and seas, smooth fields, white sheets of water, and pure sky. I thought of all by turns, and still I lie, sleepless. And soon the small bird's melodies Must hear first uttered from my orchid trees And the first cuckoo's melancholy cry Even thus, last night and two nights more I lay And could not win thee sleep by any still So do not let me wear the night Without thee, what is all the morning's will? Come, blessed barrier between day and day, dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous love. And then we have my other favourite, which is my second favourite. Moon Man is my favourite. But this is a close second, if I can find it. I'm lost to where are you? You ready? A wink and a blink and a nod one night sailed off in a wooden she sailed on a river of crystal light into a sea of cheap. Where are you going and what do you wish? The old men asked the three. We have come to fish for herring fish that live in this beautiful sea. Nets of silver and gold have we, said Wingen, Blinken, and Nod. The old men laughed and sang a song as they rocked in the wooden sheep. And the wind that sped them all night long ruffled the waves of cheap. The little stars were the herring fish that lived in the beautiful sea. Now cast your nets wherever you wish, never a Afraid are we? So cried the stars to the fishermen three, winkin, blinkin, and nod. All night long their nets they threw to the stars in the twinkling foam. Then down from the skies came the wooden she, bringing the fishermen home. Twas all so pretty a sail it seemed to if it could. And some folk thought twas a dream they dreamed of sailing that beautiful sea. But I shall name you the fisherman three. Wink, blink, and nod. I love that. Winking and blinking are two little eyes, and nod is a little head. And the wooden shoe that sailed the skies is a wee one's trundle bed. So shut your eyes while mother sings a one. And you shall see. I have moved quickly into this position, into the bed. I'm going to finish this. The last little bit was. So shut your eyes while mother sings of wonderful sights that be. And you shall see the beautiful things as you rock in the misty sea. Where the old shoe rocked the fishermen three. Winking, blinking and not. for bed, all feeling good and nice and and we're gonna continue distracting you but from here, from the bed view, you know so I want you to just tuck in as well just face me okay so I'm gonna distract you, there I've got my hot water bottle here it's lovely and warm so I'm gonna radiate my heat you. And I've got my little pink covers on today. I like pink, so I often have pink covers. So I'm going to tuck this in here. Okay. Tuck it all in. Okay. There we are. Okay. 
so I am going to distract you a little bit about winter because I feel like every season as we come into it there's something super special every season it's just I love the change I think so when it comes to winter, which is what we're starting to get into, I do love those crisp mornings or when you wake up and the ground is frozen and it's white everywhere. But most importantly, I love the first snowfall. How magical is the first snow of the year? And it starts to fall down. It starts to just gently so exciting to see it just starts to fall down just ever so gently and I just love like my dogs get so excited I get so excited with that first snow and I do love this side of winter where you start to get excited or there's a bit of a buzz around this time of the year People are starting to get ready for Christmas, they're starting to shop, they're starting to prepare, make plans, see people. Um, but more importantly, I love the cosy nights that you get. It's dark, the clocks have now come back, and it's dark. It's dark in the mornings, dark at night. And at night, you know, it's 5 o'clock, 5 p.m., and it's dark. So it's time for a hot chocolate. Get your fluffy socks on. Cuddle up. I feel like winter is a little bit more for hibernation. Cozy evenings. To just relax. Get a book. Get a really good book and just cuddle up. Get that hot chocolate. Or watch a new series. It's definitely Find your most comfortable little chair in your corner of paradise and I want you to just imagine cuddling up on that chair with a hot chocolate, maybe some marshmallows, maybe some whipped cream. Just snuggling on in, okay? I want you to imagine that. Get all cozy for me, all cozy. Okay. Feel that warmth and that just general nice feeling. That's what I want you to envision. I want you to imagine. I want you to remember. That's what we're distracting you with. Okay. <laughs> well, speaking of distraction, I actually have gone. I've sought some things for you. A little trigger a very short little trigger game where I have a handful of little triggers and I want you to listen to what they are and I want you to guess what they are okay? Can you do that for me? Okay, I need to try and get them around you without seeing. Okay, this is the first one. very well if you saw you might have guessed what it is this is my fluffy pen you know I never use this a pen I feel like I should I always kept it for YouTube but I think this would be cool imagine I rocked up to a meeting with this love okay okay I'll try and be better with the next Here is a 
like a one on each side. Any idea what this could be? I really could think. So many feathers now. They came out of this cell back from my chicken costume the other weekend. Okay, you probably will guess what this is. Now come in this side. It is a massage ball. That would have been really hard for you to get it. I mean, it's meant to be good. Now what I want you to do is you need to follow my strict instructions so I'm going to give very strict instructions and you need to do exactly what I say. Can you do that? Okay. Because you won't get a second chance. So you've got to do it. Okay. So I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay. Lift your left leg into the air. Hold it for three, two, one, and bring it back down. Now wave with your right hand and put it back to where it was. You must now blink three times. Close your eyes again. I want you to give me a really big smile. Hold it. Three, two, one. Back up to normal. Okay. 
I want you to try and touch your nose with your tongue. Can you touch your nose with your tongue? I can. My mom can. It's so gross. <laughs> can you? As far as I can. <laughs> Take a deep breath in and out. I want you to try and roll your tongue. I want you to raise your eyebrows really high and then back to normal. I want you to open your eyes. Look to your left. Look to your right. And close your eyes again. I want you to repeat after me. I am distracted I want you to hum the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star under your breath You need to turn your head to the left and then turn your head to the right and bring your head back into the middle. I want you to bring your chin to chest and then chin to the sky and back to normal. I want you to gently touch your nose with your left finger and then back normal. I want you to whisper to yourself, I am loved. And then back to normal, which was silence. <laughs> I want you to give me another big smile. And then back to normal and relax. Okay, you're now free to do what you want to do while still watching me. Okay. Now we are gonna do the dot dot line line game. Okay. But I'm gonna do it with this stick. I was gonna do it with that stick, but I'm now gonna do it with this stick. <laughs> So we're going to do it three times. Okay. Dot, dot, line, line. Spiders crawling up your spine. Tight, squeeze, cool, breeze. <sighs> Crack an egg on your head. again. Dot, dot, line, line. Spiders crawling up your spine. Tight, squeeze, curl, breeze. <sighs> Crack an egg on your head. And now you've got this One more time. Dot, dot, line, line. Spiders crawling up your spine. Tight, squeeze, cool, breeze. <sighs> Crack 
13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 your pack and I'll distract you we'll play the snake game and then I'll draw things on your back okay all to you distract you okay. I draw a snake upon your back and guess which finger I tap The middle one. <laughs> okay, I'll go again. I draw a snake upon your back. Guess which finger I tapped you with last? Which finger? It was. The ring finger. Okay, 
granted is I'm drawing, I'm gonna do it with my left hand. So it's gonna be a little bit more not as good as normal. And I'm gonna draw something on your back so you can feel it. Then I'm gonna do it in the air in front of you so you can see it. And you need to tell me what I've drawn. Okay, we'll do it three times. Okay, the first one. Mm. A really easy one. What did I draw on your back? Single shape. I drew a window. <laughs> I don't know if they were easy or hard. I tried to make them really easy this time, but I'm not sure how to go on with that. But I thought that'd be good. Okay. Now I do have my little hairbrush. This is the cutest little hairbrush there ever was. And I'm going to distract you by tapping and brushing your hair and my hair. I'm gonna ruin my curls though.
smell so I put on baking I was like I've got a bread maker and I put on a loaf and I can actually smell it it's baking coming through the room there's sometimes nothing better than the smell of bread baking it's so good it's just a nice Sometimes pull out the curls if you brush too much. It's like I'm slowly sliding. <laughs>
a lot. Okay. You're special. One of a kind. So unique. There's nobody else in the world that's like you. You're an individual. And that's a good thing. Because you're irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. Okay. And you are. People do care for you. You're handsome and beautiful. Exactly as you are. You are interesting. You have a good A good person to be around. Everyone wants to be in your presence and hear what you have to say. You are appreciated. Your hard work is noticed and it is valued. You are loved. Loved. Loved is what you are. And you are loved. You are just something amazing and wonderful. You should be so proud of yourself and your journey. I'm proud of you, and others are proud of you too. You're not invisible. And you can do it. You can do anything you put your mind L'Oreal would say, you're worth it. <laughs> okay, my love. Now I think we hope to distract you with a little bedtime story. What do you think? I have the Grim Brothers books, and I'd like to do one from here. Nothing too long, nothing too short. Trying to see what would be good. And we do a classic. We've done that one. Hmm. Let me see what we have today. Should we do? I feel like it's a good time. We have done that one. Mm, I was going to do Hansel and Gretel. I'm thinking let's do one that's like no traditional. What's this one? I can't remember what this is. It's called The Robber Bridegroom. Okay, just a word of warning. Sometimes these stories are very cute, hence the ones that have become well-known fairy tales, but sometimes they're a little bit morbid, so you don't always know what you're going to get with the Grimm Brothers, okay? So I'm going to read you The Robber Bridegroom, and I have no idea what this is going to be like. So just close your eyes and bear with me, okay? There was once a miller who had one beautiful daughter. And as she was grown up, he was anxious that she should be well married and provided for. He said to himself, 
I will give her to the first suitable man who comes and asks for her hand. Not long after a suitor appeared, and as he appeared to be very rich, and the miller could see nothing in him with which to find fault, he betrothed a daughter to him. But the girl did not care for the man, as a girl ought to care for her betrothed husband. She did not feel she could entrust him, and she could not look at him nor think of him with an inward shoulder shudder. One day he said to her, You have not yet paid me a visit, although we have been betrothed for some time. I do not know where your house is, she answered. My house is out there in the dark forest, he said. She tried to excuse herself by saying that she would not be able to find the way thither. Her betrothed only replied, You must come and see me next Sunday. I have already invited guests for that day, and that you may not mistake the way. I will strew ashes along the path. When Sunday came, and it was time for the girl to start, a feeling of dread came over her, which she could not explain, and that she might be able to find her path again. She filled her pockets with peas and lentils to sprinkle on the ground as she went along. On reaching the entrance to the forest, she found the path strewed with ashes and these she followed, throwing down some peas on either side of her at every step she took. She walked the whole day until she came to the deepest, darkest part of the forest. There she saw a lonely house, looking so grim and mysterious that it did not please her at all. She stepped inside, but not a soul was to be seen and a great silence reigned throughout. Suddenly a voice cried, Turn back, turn back, young maiden fair, linger not in this murderer's lair. The girl looked up and saw the voice came from a bird hanging in a cage on the wall. Again it cried, Turn back, turn back, young maiden fair, linger not in this murderer's Layer. The girl passed on, going from room to room of the house, but they were all empty, and still she saw no one. At last she came to the cellar, and there sat a very, very old woman, who could not keep her head from shaking. Can you tell me, asked the girl, if my betrothed husband lives here? Ah, you poor child, answered the old woman. What a place for you to come to. This is a murderer's den. You think yourself a promised bride, and that your marriage will soon take place. But it is with death that you will keep your marriage feast. Look, do you see that large cauldron of water, which I am obliged to keep on the fire? As soon as they have you in their power, they will kill you without mercy, and cook and eat you, for they are eaters of men. If I did not take pity on you and save you, you would be lost. Thereupon the old woman led her behind a large cask, which quite hid her from view. Keep as still as a mouse, she said, do not move or speak, or it will all be over with you. Tonight, when the robbers are asleep, we will flee together. I have long been waiting for an opportunity to escape. The words were hardly out of her mouth when the godless crew returned, dragging another young girl along with them. They were all drunk and paid no heed to her cries and lamentations. They gave her wine to drink, three glasses full one of white wine, one of red, one of yellow, and with that her heart gave way and she died. They tore off her dainty clothing, laid her on a table, and cut her beautiful body.
body into pieces and sprinkled salt upon it. The poor betrothed girl crouched trembling and shuddering behind the task, for she saw what a terrible fate had been intended for her by the robbers. One of them now noticed a gold ring still remaining on the little finger of the murdered girl, and he could not draw it off easily. He took a hatchet and cut it off, but the finger sprang into the air and fell behind the cask onto the lap of the girl who was hiding there. The robber took a light and began looking for it, but he could not find it. Have you looked behind the large cask? said one of the others, but the woman called out, Come and eat your suppers and let the thing be till tomorrow. The finger won't run away. The old woman is right, said the robbers, and they ceased looking for the finger and sat down. The old woman then mixed a sleeping draught with their wine, and before long they were all lying on the floor of the cellar, fast asleep and snoring. As soon as the girl was assured of this, she came from behind the cask. She was obliged to step over the bodies of the sleepers, who were lying close together and every moment she was filled with renewed dread, lest she should awaken them. But God helped her, so that she passed safely over them, and then she and the old woman went upstairs, opened the door, and hastened, hastened as fast as they could from the murderer's den. They found the ashes scattered by the wind, but the peas and lentils had sprouted and grown sufficiently above the ground, to guide them in the moonlight along the path. All night long they walked, and it was morning before they reached the mill. Then the girl told her father all that had happened. The day came that had been fixed for the marriage. The bridegroom arrived, and also a large company of guests, for the miller had taken care to invite all his friends and relations. As he sat at the feast, each guest in turn was asked to tell a tale. The bride sat still and did not say a word. And you, my love, said the bridegroom, turning to her, is there no tale you know? Tell us something. I will tell you a dream then, said the bride. I went alone through a forest and came at last to a house. Not a soul could I find within, but a bird that was hanging in a cage on the wall cried. Turn back, turn back, young maiden's fear, linger not in this murderer's lair. And again a second time it said these words. Well, my darling, this was only a dream. I went on through the house from room to room, but they were all empty, and everything was so grim and mysterious. At last I went down to the cellar, and there sat a very, very old woman, who could not keep her head still. I asked her if my betrothed lived here, and she answered, Ah, you poor child, you are come to a murderer's den. Your betrothed does indeed live here, but he will kill you without mercy, and afterwards cook and eat you. My darling, this is only a dream. The old woman hid me behind a large cask, and scarcely had she done this when the robbers returned home, dragging a young girl with them. They gave her three kinds of wine to drink, white, red, and yellow, and with that she died. My darling, this is only a dream. Then they tore off her dainty clothing and cut her beautiful body into pieces and sprinkled salt upon it. My darling, this is only a dream. And one of the robbers saw there was a gold ring so left on her finger, and it was difficult to draw off. He took a hatchet and cut off her finger but the finger sprang into the air and fell behind the great cask onto my lap. And here it is, the ring with the finger, the finger with the ring. And with these words, the bride drew forth the finger and showed it to the assembled guests. The bridegroom, who during this recital had grown deadly pale up and tried to escape, but the guests seized him and held him fast. They delivered him up to justice and he and all his murderous band were condemned to death for their wicked deeds. The end. I told you, the Grimm brothers can be a little bit, um, a little bit 
dodge with their stories at times, but I quite enjoyed that one apart from them cutting up a girl. It was cute. <laughs> and I'm sure it will have distracted you, which is exactly what we wanted today. So now, we have got to get you to sleep. So, I'm gonna count down from 15, okay? A little countdown from 50. And we're gonna get you into a nice state of relaxation. And then we're gonna do some deep breathing. And then we are going to go to sleep. Okay. Fifty forty nine forty eight forty seven forty six forty five. Close your eyes. And we're going to do some deep breaths together. 
together, okay? We're just gonna deep breaths and relax. So breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. I want you just to keep doing that. Just breathe in and out really slowly, okay? Just relax. Close your eyes, okay? Just close them. Think of wonderful things. Maybe about the chicken and the egg, or whether you're wearing pajamas or not. Something distracting. <laughs> and relax. Maybe you're gonna think about winter. Being all cozy and warm. Safe. Cared for. All tucked up. Somebody always has a worse, no matter how bad it feels. And right now, it might feel bad, but you're safe, you're warm, you're loved, and you're ready. Drift off to sleep. Okay? Just let your body take you where it wants to take you. Okay. And we're gonna try and sleep same time together. So I'm gonna put this down.